I'm kind of getting bored of these video games I'm playing, and they, they take all the time, and, um, and these are games of imperfect information. Whereas chess was a game of perfect information. It's, it's all there in front of you. You just have to know what to do with it. I'm Craig Dubose. I'm the tournament director of the Sligo Spring Tournament 2023, and also the chairperson of the Sligo Chess Club. I got into chess during the pandemic sort of period, and quickly realized, or quickly thought after attending some, some over-the-board events for the first time that, hey, I could, I could do something like that. I was uh, immediately impressed by, by everything. I don't think I've been in a venue like this in Ireland, to be honest. All, all small details like the the players' names and uh, and the the small uh, flags and uh, there were even pens from yeah usually you don't get pens so the, I was actually looking desperately for a while for somewhere to play but I couldn't really find anywhere that made sense for me to play because you don't want to play people who are too low rated you don't want to play people that are just going to kill you but I think it could be like the new the new big thing. <laughs>I lost all my games except for my, oh sorry, I lost my first four games and then I won my fifth one and I was absolutely ecstatic. You wouldn't think that losing four games and you would be happy, but, but I won my first game and, and you know, as far as I'm concerned, it was, it was, all, it was all, all downhill from there. Coming back from that, um, I thought to myself, kind of seeing how things were done, I thought it could be done at a higher level. Um, but that was the genesis of, of the tournament. Let's have a, let's have a FIDE rated, IC rated event here at Sligo, at IT Sligo at the time. And uh, he was like, yeah, I was like, I was like, I'll do everything. Don't worry, just you just need to kind of come along for the ride. He kept chess in Sligo alive during during the pandemic and even, and even the years before that. There was no other entry point, really, official entry point um, into the scene. So so he kept he kept the fire burning uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, when, when it had gone out in many other places across the country for, for many different reasons. So, so yeah, Fergal, for, so Fergal, you know, gets a lot of my respect for just keeping things ticking along, basically. It's great to see so many players, so many people coming to, to uh, Enniscrollen or to Sligo for this tournament. It's been a really good turnout. So I think, I think it's great, yeah. I'm really happy about that. Alex McGurin is the Grandmaster the only one in Ireland, and he is the presumptive favorite. He's the highest rated player in, in the section, and so anyone who had money on it, would, you'd have to put on him. Probably if you had Alex Bavorian, because he's probably the best here. Grandmaster Bavorian is, is the most obvious guest to be the winner of the tournament. Uh, at the top, it's probably Alex Bavorian. The Grandmaster's going to win. This is the second year of this tournament running, I believe, and I did play last year. Or on ranking, I would be favorite, I suppose. But, um, like I said before, I'm kind of semi-retired, so it's not easy for me to play. So I'm not really working on my my own game. Uh, the lady Evgenia Dulhano from Ukraine, she actually won it very convincingly last year, and she's she's playing again. So she is probably the most active player. Benya is really good. Last year she won, so she might win again. You've played her before. Yes, last year. Can you tell me about that a little? Yeah, it was it was fantastic. I won a tournament. <laughs> I had first prize last year, so it was good. 
there's a lot that can happen in a tournament. You could have a very good tournament, you could have a great day, you could also get lucky. You could also just play really good chess in comparison to someone else. Uh, the first game was actually very easy. I was playing a former student of mine. I mean, I say former because in the pandemic we kind of uh, lost touch. Uh, John Healy from Dublin. And John just made a mess out of the opening and it's not my achievement, it's kind of his fault. He was unlucky enough to, to be just over the middle, uh, sorry, just under the middle, so I, I played up to the, the top seed in this game, so that was, uh, that was tough. Playing up that much, if you go a bit wrong at the, at the opening, it's, it's very much uphill, there's not a lot of scope to play yourself back into the game. They just, a guy like, a guy at that level is just able to um, sustain and increase the advantage. It, it, it was an easy game. Like my opponent played, like a, it was a bit of a weird situation because he played a, 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 an opening that was really, really common. But for some reason, in the middle of it, on the, I don't know, fifth or sixth move, I doubted myself if I knew the right move. And so I spent like 20 minutes trying to figure it out. Trying to figure out, if, is this the right move? Because if I mess it up, I'm on the back foot for the rest of the game. It probably end up being a draw or something. You know, constantly defending then. A draw against a much stronger player. So 300 points stronger than me. So yeah, that was a good, good result for me. Also, I think I was actually winning in the end, but I was uh, had a terrible time trouble and uh, was tired and everything. So yeah, money over the draw and so I'll have to check that game and analyze it later. Well, my first game um, it was kind of strange, but like yeah, I was black and I got into a Dutch defense, which my opponent was very unfamiliar with. So I just played my theory. So I won that game. The first one against Eugene Donoghue, who's a bit lower rated than me, but whenever I play him, he's a tough one to, to beat and put away. And this one went on for four hours plus, went until half eleven at night. Um, I, yeah, it was frustrating because when you play a lower rated player, you, you, you want a nice, in the first round, you want a nice, comfortable win. And it, it, it ground on and ground on. It was in a, a drawn ending. And eventually, I got to a case where I had. Rook and three pawns against Rook and one pawn, and I was going to sack my Rook on his one pawn, and I thought my three pawns were going to be, uh, they were connected, so that was going to be an easy win. And one stage the computer was even saying that was a draw. So that, but um, he, he went wrong in the defence, and after that it was a straightforward win, but four hours, that, that was a lot tougher than I wanted. So this was board two. Quick game for Evgenia. Oh, King's Gambit! We'd love to see that. Okay. Uh, I was uh, seven years old when uh, I started to learn chess in the chess club. It was uh, not my decision, sure, in seven. Uh, it was my father's dream to have a uh, chess player in his family, so it was a decision of father. Sometimes I like to have some attack, sometimes I like to play end games, but I guess if you would like to be professional, uh, you have to. Uh, to be available for any kind of position, any kind of styles, because uh, after opening, uh, somehow it's, uh, you know, you have position that you need to play. It's not always uh, about our choice. Uh, I'm Russian originally, but I came here donkey years ago, 1993. I was uh, an only child, parents both working. I was uh, kind of uh, an, an elderly, uh, relative was kind of minding me so I don't think we had too much in common so when I discovered chess that was a godsend because I could uh, just basically immerse myself in the game so I think it was about seven I was about seven when my dad uh, taught me how to play and around that same time a lady came to my school and she started the chess club so I got hooked uh, at least I used to be a professional player and uh, that was in the 90s I was uh, playing in a tournament in France and I met uh, Eamon Kyo, who was then uh, chairperson of the Irish Chess Union. And he told me over breakfast I just wanted to practice my English. 
he told me over one breakfast that he wanted to bring someone uh, over from the former Soviet Union to work with best players in Ireland and I, ideally with some juniors to bring the standard up. So we continued talking about this idea. So eventually I came for a year. First, he invited me to play in, in, a, in a competition just to see how, you know, that I like the place. So, and then in 1993, I came for a year with my wife and uh, one year turned into almost 30 now. Well, I've been playing chess since I was 10 years old and I came, got into chess because of my dad. My dad is massive into chess. He got, uh, he won a competition to go play against Boris Spassky and I got to see him play against him in the Simultan. So I kind of got hooked on it since then. So, so then my kid, um, yeah, she's only a girl, a little child like at the time. She was videoing the match against me in, in Spassky and she was over my shoulder with her, with her little, in those days you had these wee, wee, wee video cameras, uh, like instead of mobile phones. So there she was, you know, going like this. <laughs> behind me, uh, oh, so, that. Uh, so then she started playing chess, brought her to one of Alex and her Bavarin's tournament, brought the whole road up to it, and uh, three girls, and uh, they finished with three trophies. How do you find playing in the world of chess as a woman? Um, well, it's always one of those things where you're always going to be one of the only ones, so it's always nice when you see another girl, another female, even if it's only a little child, you're like, oh. Gosh, I'm not the only one. So yeah, it is a little bit intimidating at times when you're just in a room full of like men, but I'm kind of used to it at this stage, so it's not so bad. I think every woman has faced uh, difficulties playing chess in in any tournament. Um, maybe now it has gone a bit better, but also there's more tournaments and there's more people playing chess, so um, the risk of of having some comments being made is higher and I think that there are still, uh, it hasn't stopped at all. Um, but for me, I've had multiple experiences where I felt um, that uh, that people have thought I was inferior. Uh, for example, my earliest memory was I played in a tournament in Galway and it was the first time when I um, entered a Masters tournament, a Masters section, sorry. and. Um, I was the lowest seed and I was the only girl and um, in general I'm usually the only, I, I used to be the only woman in a, in a tournament, in a section and um, someone commented to my dad and I overheard the, co the conversation, he, uh, he said that what am I doing here, um, I, don't, I don't belong in the, in the master section um, and I didn't come last so that just proof that I did belong there. Way back, say five years ago, it wasn't really the same. I'd say um, there's still a lot of issue going around um, females playing in, in chess, but now I think it's gotten way, way better and I hope it just continues to be equal for everyone and I hope that, you know, um, the titles would eventually, the number of females would rise enough to say that, oh, actually, we don't even need the WFM or WGM anymore because there's enough female playing in this game. And in terms of that, do you feel welcome in the chess world? Yeah, no, I do. I think everyone's kind of happy when they see like a girl there because, um, I mean, I think there's enough guys to come out. <laughs> I was not happy with my second game because I lost the uh, end game. Second game was a brilliant game. I, uh, my opponent thought they tricked me in the opening, but actually they gave me what I wanted. And it was a very, again, a very, very long game. But apparently, according to my friend, I was winning the whole game, but I didn't feel like it. It's always, always easier to see it afterwards. It was a great game. It's not so bad as uh, could uh, be, uh, but okay, I still lost uh, a little bit of rating. So I go and say I'm happy with my result and the game. After the second round, uh, it was no, ch no chances to be happy like <laughs> then. The second game was quite interesting. And, uh, most players would go over the game with with computer, with a chess engine, just to see uh, where you went wrong, etc. So I haven't done that with that game yet, but it would be interesting because I think it was 
a, a game where there were some interesting decisions made, lots of mistakes, I'm quite sure. So, so at some point I thought I was in trouble, then I was winning, then I nearly messed up and then kind of ended up in a draw. Overall, I was a bit disappointed, uh, I think. Saturday morning, I had one of the, the kids, one of the teenagers, I think he's, I think he's 13, uh, played him last week as well. He's, he's very underrated, he's a very strong player online. Again, it's when you're playing five-minute games online compared to 90-minute games here, it, it's not quite the same thing. But he's, he's a very, very strong player, and you've got to treat them with <clears throat> you've got to treat them with respect. I drew him last week. This week was an interesting game. I said because I played him last week with the same colours, he knew what opening I was going to play. I knew what opening he was going to play. So I was kind of looking at it, going, "Do we go for that again? Where do we change?" I didn't like what happened last week, so I changed my opening completely, which he wasn't expecting. He wasn't comfortable. So that was kind of first blow there. But again, after four hours, I, I just went out of tax and, and he was able to. Um, he nearly offered a draw. He decided not to in the end, and then I got an in exchange in time trouble. Um, I was playing the Ukrainian boy, and we went into the game. It was level at first. Then I was winning by a bishop. Then he took my bishop back. Then he pinned my rook and queen with a pawn, protected by another horse, and he took my rook. And then he got another queen and he checkmated me. Uh, she played the French defence. I never felt that I was outside my comfort zone during the game. On re-analyzing the game with an engine afterwards, I discovered that there was a possibility where she could have forced a draw. Um, but I managed to get the win and I was quite happy with that because she's um, quite a, a decent player in her own right. And number three just now was again a really long game where this ebbed and flowed, but I thought I was better for almost all the game. And then at the end, it was one of these positions where it's probably a draw, but very difficult for the guy. And then he just made a mistake and it was over. But it literally finished after about four and a quarter hours, which was great. My third game, I got a draw, but um, I got into a Sicilian dragon. And yeah, I, she offered draw multiple times but then I declined and yeah I offered a draw in the end thinking that it was quite equal and she was attacking so I just offered a draw but it turns out it's minus 3.5 for me so I was winning but I didn't know it at the same time. This game last night is the most memorable one because it was 70 moves, 70-ish moves and we were playing on you get 30 seconds per move extra for each move that you play and both of us were playing on an increment and we were playing on this extra 30 seconds for maybe 25 moves or something you know so really really tense really kind of uh, uh, nerve-wracking stuff and I, I came off came off worse in the end but um, I can't have any complaints like I look at those games and I think to myself well um, I've not hung my queen, I've not lost, I've not given up any pieces, um, really. So I've got to be relatively happy with how I've played, I think. And in the fourth game, this morning was an interesting game. Um, a King's Gambit where I, I didn't really like the position in the opening, but then I, I found a tactic midway through the game, which, as I was pointed out after I was by my opponent, Shouldn't have been midway through the game because I just missed essentially a, a, almost a mate in the middle of the tactic um, and I got into an ending that I was slightly better in but obviously when I had mate on the board I completely missed that and would have capped off a very nice tactic um, but at least my opponent spotted and he was able to, <laughs> he was able to say that afterwards. I, I just played uh, Kevin um, there earlier and uh, he played a nice game as well and so I've lost that one so I'm on 50% so the hope is just get one, get one more win and, and come out slightly better. <laughs> Come out plus one, that would be nice. That was probably the hardest game that I played in uh, that tournament. Um, I did sack a queen in order to get possible mate or, um, or to win the exchange, which I did do. Um, and then, I'm not sure if we were at one time, but it seemed like a long game. Uh, but I managed to just get over the line with, um, with Ross. <laughs> I think all the games are finished, so I think we have break now. I am going to 
eat quick lunch and and I will see you guys back in one hour I think all the games are over so here are the rounds so on board one Johnny is the only one on four out of four have you ever played against Alexander the Grandmaster before I have I've played against uh, Alexander I think twice now and I drew once and I lost one so I was a full point ahead of everyone going to the final round somehow. I uh, managed to get a draw in my final game and secure the win of the tournament. I played Grandmaster Alex Baburin as white and I played a very solid opening and it's a very long strategic sort of game which usually isn't my style but when you win as seldom as I do it's you know you've got to do something different. So it was a great game, very very long, um, very very long, very tough but happy to get the result, get the win. Uh, I was surprised uh, when, 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 when John, Johnny won, um, and again, this is based on titles. So, so you've got a Grandmaster, uh, two International Masters, a Woman Grandmaster, two or three, well, I can't, two or three Fide Masters, and then you've got a few Canon Masters. So you've got all these people that are theoretically ahead of Johnny in terms of the, 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 the level of their title. In fact, Johnny hadn't even been registered, I think, I think it might have been three days before that he he called me and said, hey, listen, I need to maybe help get to there from the airport. And I was like, okay, make some calls, try to do that. He's like, okay, actually, no, you don't never run. I'm not gonna come, I'm not gonna come. And then maybe a day later, he's like, okay, yeah, I'm coming. So so this is like, this guy goes on to win, and he he probably wasn't, he didn't think he was gonna be there a few days before the tournament. So that's his he was a very last minute sort of entry to the tournament. Um, so it's funny that even in that sense that you know, he might not even come. But even, I remember asking him um, after the event, kind of, uh, as we're sorting out prize money and saying, were you surprised? And he said that, um, essentially that, hey, look, you know, I, I'm, I've been playing some good chess really recently and, and you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling confident and good. And, and he's like, if I, he's like, he said, I think he said, basically, if I played well and I played how I can play, then, then I have a chance. But I, but I, but I thought I'd, I'd have every chance. Um, so I said, well, more, more power to you, congratulations, and, and, and well done. So, yeah, it was definitely a shock. Uh, the last game, uh, round five, I was very nervous about it. I had four out four up until this point, and it was against top rated, and uh, Luki and uh, Hushpit. Um, he's a very, very decent player with a very, very good temper for the game. Uh, my name is Lukian Ahoshpit. Uh, I'm 13 years old. I started at 6 years old and then go to chess club, learn, learn, play. Um, going into the game, uh, I'd looked at the, um, the positions of where everyone else was. Uh, me and Lukian were a point clear of uh, the chase pack, so I knew that a draw would get us both in the top two. Uh, during the game, I played white. I was very aggressive in the opening. Um, I calculated prior to the game that there was a high probability of me winning the tiebreak because at that point I thought it was the board system that would be used as a tiebreak. Um, so I got into a good position against him, very attacking. Um, I'm on move 23, I believe, so maybe move 27. I offer the draw uh, with, a good, with a bit of gameplay theory, thinking that if he accepts it, thinking that um, he wouldn't, if he did end up losing the game, he would be on four points and maybe drop out of the prize money. So I used a bit of gameplay theory there, thinking that he would accept, knowing that he'd be guaranteed maybe seconds, thinking that I would get first. Um, he accepted the draw. Um, uh, so I'd ended up with four and a half points, the same as Lupien. Uh, last game, the draw and then played uh, two more games, two more Blitz games, to depend who is winner. No tiebreak is ever going to be 100% fair. It can't be. It's just a matter of sorting out people who finished on the same score. They, they really share the prize. But you want to give one second and one third, so you have to use some other criteria. And no matter what way you do it, some the one who comes below will complain. As I said, the, the rules and, and that this was going to happen was, was all in the terms which was available on the website. Now, of course, 
as as we all do, we you know, who not everybody reads the terms. Um, some people do, but not everyone does. And people make a lot of assumptions about what's going to happen at this tournament, and that it's going to be like every other tournament they've played in. And then when I announced that we would be starting the Blitz game soon, they were completely blindsided. And and obviously had not looked at the terms, had, had made assumptions about what was happening, had no idea. And I think from their perspective, I had, I had taken this thing away from them. Championship. For, for the championship, which is okay. uh, Steve Garman. Yeah, okay guys. So, okay, you're younger, so I'll let you uh, take a hand. Which one? So you're white now in the first game, okay? Loki and his white, game one. Okay. I, I thought he was joking. Uh, because I've never known any tournament to, to finish, a classical tournament to finish in that way. And, and then when I realised I had to play um, uh, Lukian again, uh, I then found out he had a rating, I was told either 2200 or 2400 of Blitz. Uh, my heart sank, because I thought, oh my god, I'm up against it now. I made an error in the opening, it was the same opening that we played the Scotch Gambit in um, our fifth round game, but I made an error in that as the game went on. All I remember is dropping my queen, um, trying to play on, and uh, having no chance uh, against him. Um, I played him then uh, as the black pieces, and I just, um, he was just so much better than me. Uh, the last game, the draw, and then played uh, two more games, two more blitz games, to depend who is winner. And how did that go? And I won two games. So yeah, Lukian, um, I shook his hand straight away when he had uh, when he'd won, congratulated him on winning the championship section. I was still a little bit disappointed that it went to the to the blitz situation, um, but there we go, that's, that's what happened. And so again, Dean thought he'd won, something he, he hasn't, and he's in a bad situation that um, a disadvantageous situation that he wouldn't have put himself in, perhaps, if he had realized the situation. Um, I think, from my perspective as the tournament organizer or the tournament director, um, technically, I did things um, according to the letter of, of the regulations, but that's probably not that's not good enough uh, from from my from my view. Um, if I had known what was coming, uh, in terms of in terms of people being upset and drama afterwards, I would have taken the ten seconds before the last round started and announced it. Um, but it just it just did not occur to me. Uh, apart from that little blitz thing at the end, if I'd known, I may have um, played on in the fifth round, not uh, not off the draw. But that wouldn't just uh, deter me from playing in um, in the same tournament again. It's one of the best tournaments. It's been very, very well organised. Um, I'm really, really happy to find out that we're playing it next year in the same way. I would say by far this is the most professional weekend I've ever been to. Um, I've been to tournaments all over the world uh, in three different continents. And this is, this is by far the nicest weekend I've ever seen. The players get treated with great respect. Uh, the conditions are lovely. Hotel's very nice. Um, yeah, and everything's really nice and the organiser's great. So thank you. Yeah. I think it's uh, it, it's good that there is a new tournament on the calendar, so that's uh, it's definitely positive. And the playing conditions are very nice. So. Craig has put in an amazing amount of effort to, to make it happen, so um, so much of it is down to him. Um, and I, we can continue to do it in future years here. Make, make Sly go into a kind of um, chess centre in Ireland. I, I just would like to say, like, uh... Thanks for such beautiful tournaments, yeah, and uh, wish uh, best of luck to organizers of this tournament and uh, to players to improve uh, their chess and uh, like that. Uh, yeah, quite happy to have this second visit, if I'm not thinking about rating, <laughs> which I lost. <laughs> yeah, so like that. Thank you.